just a quick preface to this video. About once a year I get into a really long, deep, entangled, complex repair. Last year, I believe it was a Grundig table radio. This year, it's this Motorola solid state black and white portable set. This is really long repair, takes a lot of turns because somebody else had worked on it before me and so I had to deal with their mistakes which and also a lack of service information which really made this one uh, tough, complex and confusing. I usually post a video every Monday but I took the previous week off trying to finish this thing up and I think I'll take the next week off to give everybody time to get through this video because this is a it's a really long one and I think it's probably hard to follow at times. So anyway, repairing a 1974 Motorola black and white solid state portable 19 inch uh, television set. Enjoy the video. Majority of all creditors will work with consumers to eliminate a majority of the U.S. economy's unsecured debt. We have pre-negotiated terms with the majority of all creditors allowing you to take advantage of this today. Press 1 now to see if you qualify for this limited time offer, or press 2 to be removed from this calling list. Thank you for calling. Your call is very important to us. All of our specialists are currently assisting other customers, so please stay on the line for the next available representative. We're one of the most reputable debt relief companies in the country. We offer our clients financial education and one-on-one -on -one customer service. Your consultation is 100%. Hello, my name is Pete with the Debt Settlement Department. You've been connected with us to see if we can reduce your minimum monthly payments for your credit cards. We can also resolve credit card debt in as little as 12 months. How much unsecured debt do you currently have? I have a What was that? Hello? Yes, I'm here. Hello, I'm here. I'm here. Largest collection of officially licensed all right, we're, gear from all the we're in the shop today because there's a kind of a weird rainstorm going on outside that I guess is part of one of these her Pacific hurricanes that broke up and came in. So we are inside, and I don't like doing videos inside, but I guess I have no choice. So welcome to Shango's shop. This is not a lab. We do not do research and development on this channel. That's what you do in a lab. We repair and make working again old junk from the past. So, while we watch these lovely commercials, there's something I wanted to bring up, which I'll have to do a full video on this. These annoying spam calls on the cell phone. Uh, I've had enough of them, and my MO from here on out is going to be to press one and waste their time and my thought on this is if everybody presses one and wastes their time they'll eventually go away now I've been doing this for a couple weeks and I can tell you that the majority of the spam calls have stopped where pressing two which is the please remove me for your list does not work the talking gibberish and other stuff to them it seems like they manually take you off so here's I'm not going to go into a big thing on this right now but here's my thought on this nobody at this point nobody's answering calls on their phone that they don't recognize the number you know that that creates a real problem when a friend or a family member has a midnight emergency and you refuse to pick up uh, I could go into a couple stories where this happened to me I needed to get a hold of somebody, I needed information, I needed help, and they wouldn't answer the phone because they didn't recognize my number that I was calling from at the time. So yeah, we need to shut this this stuff down, so let's just attack these people. Need this 
is what you do need. Complete the application within minutes, and if approved, you may get the money you need as soon as tomorrow. Money's on the way with CashNet USA. Make or kiss and make the kids put pants on and get them to school. Just close your eyes and... It's interesting they always advertise the quick cash now on the hip-hop segment of the show. It's like they always advertise Nissan vehicles in the hip-hop segment of the show. It's all about that financing. This is better than your typical car rental. This is Turo. Download the app today. Every time I log onto the Poshmark app, I find something I love. So what we're doing is we're just... The TV we're going to work on today, I believe it has a tuner problem. So I just got this little Zenith here hooked up. I did a previous video on this just to make sure that uh, the DirecTV box is all active and uh, working because I never use it. So looks good. So let's get to the subject television. This is a 1975 model year, 19 inch Motorola solid state black and white. I think I did a video on this years ago. And Motorola TVs are kind of unique. They're usually very well built. And Motorola being a semiconductor manufacturer kind of made their own stuff. So they're not RCA or Zenith. They're, they're a whole different thing. Here's the inside. Solid state. It has several integrated circuits. Oh wow, look at that. Someone's already been in here. That's the IF. That's the IF I see in NTE. Geez, do we just say that's what's wrong with it and order one right now or do we actually troubleshoot it? But it looks like someone was working on it and if I remember correctly, and like I say this was years ago, uh, the tuner just didn't work. So you can see that someone's been in here. The UHF tuner's all loose. It's got the uh, golden voice speaker. This is powered directly off the line. Do I want to call this a hot chassis? Maybe we're going to plug it into an isolation transformer. Ooh, instant on! Look at that! Boy, is that bright. Jesus, is that bright. Okay, so we, we have... So it looks and sounds alive. So I, ha I have the DirecTV box, which we know is working, because I started with the Zenith fed into this. And yeah, it's just not tuning anything. But it sure looks alive. I, it's a trip. Because it's got snow. Um, it's got hiss. You know, static. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just hose this stupid thing out. And uh, just hose these wafers down here a little bit. And then I'm going to ratchet the living crap out of it and we'll see if it wakes up all 
right, let me keep going at this. So someone disconnected this, and I'm not quite sure where that goes. I believe, I believe white is the AGC um, line, which should probably make sense if the tuner wasn't working. They disconnect the AGC to see maybe if the AGC somehow had the tuner cut off. But one thing that is interesting, if I ground, if I if I short the IF from the tuner into the IF strip it goes dead so the tuner is doing something but is it is the fault in this ballon thing right here where the signal is just not getting from here into the tuner and I can't even see where I can't see where this thing connect the ballon connects into the tuner all right, I found the connection. It's down. You can see it right there through the hole. That, that's what connects to the back side of the ballon, and I feed it into there, and I still get nothing. Interesting if I touch the antenna to here. What I've done is I'm feeding I'm feeding directly into the IF out of the Blonder Tongue modulator. The Blonder Tongue modulators have an IF out, which just happens to line up perfectly with the 45 megahertz TV IF. So I, I've just I'm not even using the tuner, so that proves a hundred percent that the fault is in the tuner. So what I'm doing is I'm coming out of the direct TV box here. I'm coming into the Blonder Tongue modulator, video in, audio in, and then they have an IF out, which usually if you're just using it as a regular, it just it, it loops around. It has this loop cable that loops back to the IF in and then that gives you the RF out. Sounds like the people on that phone call. Sounds like the people on those scam phone calls. Barely be the blade with big money. Blade the blade with big cash now. Blade the blade with big big credit card debt. Oh yeah. Now here's the uh, sarcastic side of this, I guess. All right, let's take a look at the Sams and. So this right here, and it shows two volts here, so I'm curious to know if the video signal directly out of the, um, the DirecTV box would work going into here, or if it would be too strong or too weak. So basically we, it goes into a video amp, and then it goes to a video output then it drives directly into the picture bulb so we can try injecting video or the yellow plug directly into here it's kind of neat that there's a test point and then let's see for our audio 
well the audio is super robust in this thing I mean it is loud well, it's one of these single-ended high voltage audio outputs like they use in the radio so we have an integrated circuit preamp so our our audio input would be right here into the volume control this is a sound IF back here which is an integrated circuit uh, unfortunately let's see and I don't know because I would have to go and pull the the SAMs because I can't believe they did this they have the schematic for the UHF tuner here but they do not have the schematic for the VHF tuner so I don't know if this is just another one of those whoever scanned this just whatever they just left a page off or, or what this is about but I can't believe that SAMs would produce a schematic for a TV and have the UHF tuner but not the VHF that just so these are just this is just the IF input right here this is the first IF I see first and second IF third IF and then our detector and that's our test point so let's we might just convert this to a composite input and just totally eliminate the tuner. I don't know if I'm capable of fixing the tuner and I'm definitely not going to try and dig into it without some type of schematic or service date on it. That would just be foolish on my part. So yeah, let's... Uh, I might try and pull the paper copy on this when it start, stops raining too. Go out to the garage and dig this out. Alright, so right here is where the uh, test point, the video test points located. And I wanted to bring this up. I get a lot of questions on um, Sam's Photofax. And what Sam's Photofax was, it was a company that covered uh, popular consumer electronics in in the United States they didn't cover uh, stuff in Europe or anything like that it was simply primarily just American made consumer electronics household TVs uh, console stereo stuff like that they didn't cover much multi mini multi band radios they did cover quite a few transistor radios and car radios but nothing made outside or nothing marketed or sold outside the United States it was all right i just thought of something this is a hot chassis set which means that as you can see here one side of the power plug goes directly to the chassis so um, both the IF input and the direct video and audio input are kind of off the table because yeah uh, it's uh yeah can't, can't do it the antenna input if we could see the tuner the antenna input is isolated through two disk capacitors that's why it's not hot uh, reference to the AC line so yeah I, I think the only the only thing we can do here is fix the tuner uh, I, I guess I could check this this is right on top I guess I could check this and see if we have our 19 volts or our uh, 22 volt 20 volts here yeah interesting so pink wire comes from the resistor the big power resistor right there see green to purple comes up here then we have our zener diode then the big filter capacitor right there and we have 21 volts here so we have B plus at the tuner Oh yeah, check one, check two. 
So what I decided to do was I hooked the BT modulator RF out into this and the BT modulator is extremely hot. So what I did is I connected the loop back up and I'm using the RF out out of the modulator into the TV rather than the direct TV box because the modulator has a much higher output and with that the thing is some signal is getting through so yeah this wire is still I need to solder that on See, but that indicates to me that the mix, at least the mixer and the oscillator stage are working, and it sure looks like the RF is working because it's really acting like the signal is not getting through from this point into the tuner. And I don't know that much about these tuners. I mean, I, I just coils and capacitors and transistors right but I've never had to fix one of these um, for one thing we don't use tuners anymore because there's no over-the-air uh, television so who cares if the tuner works or not but the deal is with this because it's a line chassis set you really can't just I guess you could use capacitor decoupling, but still, that I don't know. I don't want to screw with it. If I can't get the tuner to work, it's going to go in the parts bin because um, it's too dangerous to try and connect stuff directly to these hot chassis. If you get something turned over, and this does not use a polarized plug, if you get something turned over, you're going to have smoke. Speaking of that, I was pulling the tuner cover off and the fuse popped. And then I saw this. I wonder what designates the difference between 32 and 30 percent. I wonder what that 2 percent is. 32 and 68. So we have 68 percent um, domestic parts in this tuner. All right, so is this the RF amp right here? That right there? Is that the RF amp transistor? I could change that. That's in a place where I could actually get to it. Let's do some experimentation here. All right, this just keeps getting more interesting. All right, and I, I hate digging into something that someone else has already been up in because you just never know what you're, you know, what mistakes they made. And man, it's tough to correct other people's mistakes. Check this out right here. NTE 108. And for those of you who are not familiar, NTE is a new tone electronics, is a line of generic replacement parts that a lot of electronic stores carried and NTE are generic they are nowhere near as good as original equipment and what's interesting if I inject uh, so what I've done is I've come through that capacitor right there into that lead yeah I know RF and lead length real real good right if I inject into what would be the center pin of that transistor, I get enough through here. How? They cut out the middleman and ship direct. And brandless cares about the same things you do. On GMO, gluten-free, you name it. So it's it's now now keep in mind I'm using this BT modulator, which is pounding this thing. Uh, with you know 10 times the RF you'd get out of a regular box but man without a schematic it just and and the stupid NTE parts you know but it sure looks like that transistor if that's the RF amp it's not working 
because like I say, I don't know the pin out. Let me flip it around and see if we can get a visual. All right, so this one's been changed too. It's an NTE-172. Now, who knows if they put the right ones in, if they put them in correctly, base emitter, collector. This is a good one. This is, this is a set where I'm getting close to just giving up on it because, um, yeah. I mean, someone has already been up in this thing. And let me see if I could find a schematic. All right, well, here's the paper copy of this, and uh, unfortunately, and I don't know why they did this, maybe because the tuner was Taiwan sourced, and Motorola, they didn't get the service date on it because it was a, a, a an outside supplier sourced the tuner. I don't know. This is a good one. Because if you look at just about any other TV, you know, it's going to show you the tuner. In fact, I could pull another schematic here and we could look and see. Yeah, it's weird. They give the UHF tuner, but they don't give the VHF tuner. And I just don't get that. All right, here's a Motorola Quasar Color. Let's see if the it's covered in this. This is... 1460 the other one was 1462 and see here it is VHF tuner diagram um, There's our RF amp and That would make sense what I'm seeing there interesting that the the way they have that the collector is probably what I'm feeding the signal into Um it almost looks like the same circuit. So where I'm feeding the signal into is, is right here. I'm actually feeding it into right here, the second wafer. So it, it goes into the emitter and the base is just grounded. And I did have 20 volts on one of these. I don't know which pin, but um, Interesting. So that's a UHF, and that would make sense why the UHF doesn't work. So yeah, our our ballon is here. This is where our RF comes in. And this right here is that network that's on the top of the tuner. And then it comes into the tuner and it goes into the RF amp in the mixer oscillator section. So yeah, that, that makes total sense. It's going to be different, though. This is a... This is a color, this is an American-made color set, but it's the same basic idea. In fact, this tuner would probably work in the black and white set if you had the, uh, the appropriate voltage. So looking at this circuit here, you can see the base right there, the transistor, is connected to the RFAGC. So if there was no RF AGC voltage, there'd be no bias. The transistor wouldn't work. So let me do a little research. I'm not saying that this schematic is the same, but you never know. I think Motorola just grabbed some generic Chinese tuner and Taiwanese tuner, 32%, 0.5% Taiwanese tuner. All right, let's see. What is NTE-172? Darlington preamp? What? What? Typical frequency in megahertz, 60 minimum. All right, well, I was thinking maybe it said 122 on it, but there is no 122.
You tell me. All right, so the other one is a 108, and that looks right. That's the one in the front of the tuner. See, that's good up to 800 megahertz is the bandwidth on that. But this 122, 172. So a quick Googling of NTE 122. I guess it's a, a cholesterol inhibitor. That would, uh, that would work real good as an, an RF amp. You know, so this is, this is interesting. So I have, looking at the schematic out of the color TV, I have my meter connected on here to what I think is the base, which gets its bias on the color TV schematic from the RF AGC line, which is this white wire. And if I connect this white wire, I get, uh, I get five volts on the base. Come on. It's all about the hydration. It's all about keeping the frickin' hydration. When the hydration exfoliates, there you go. So when I when I hook the RFAGC line up, I get five volts of exfoliation on the base of that transistor. So why is this damn thing not hydrating? What is wrong with this? Uh, all I can think is that somebody put the wrong transistor in there. Well, if I put a Darlington in there, uh, Darlington has more gain, so it'll probably make the TV more sensitive. Yeah, okay, well, that exfoliates. All right, so the NTE 1-whatever-2A has been ex extracted and inserted into the thingy Doimler. So here's the moment of truth. What is this? Oh, look at that. So what is this? Wow, the gain is 33,000? What? You know, and this would almost make sense that if it's the 172A, the Darlington, you can see the HFE there, typical forward current gain, is 7,000 minimum. And you can see on most of these other transistors, it's under 100. So that 33,000 would make sense that that is in fact an NTE-172. But that's not... Oh, the emergency alert system's going off. We might have, and we must have another thunderstorm rolling in. Um, that would make sense, but it, but this is not an RF transistor. This is not an RF front end transistor. Hold on, got to get the airplane noise in here somewhere. Oh yeah, there we go. The video is complete now. So anyway, um, this is a tuner out of something modern. And you can see that's the front end right there. That's where the RF comes in. And that little guy right there is probably a good RF transistor. However, that could be an FET. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but that would probably be an ideal transistor to use or these look like fairly high frequency transistors too because they're real the leads are cut real short they have real small capacitors and coils around them so these could be acceptable although that right there if that is a transistor that looks like it would be a stellar rf amp you can see how it's coupled. The RF goes into that coil right there and then it's coupled capacitively into those. So that would be a good transistor and it looks like the leads might be long enough if that's an NPN transistor. All right, it, it required a bit of a brute force extraction but I got it out of there and I think it's gonna be good here. It's uh, measuring 
Uh, see the gain's only 42, not 33,000, but there it is. Let's get that put in there. All right, I think I got it in there. I, I, I can't say that it, this is a total contortionist operation to get this in here. I can't say I've ever had to sit with a TV between my legs before on the floor uh, to solder it. But anyway, I got the collector connected um, to that wafer on the left. The piece of wire, the extension is the emitter, and the base is connected to straight at the top of the screen, which is the AGC line. So I'm going to hook the AGC line back up and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, I soldered that wire back on. I soldered the AGC wire back on. Here, here we go. I don't even have the antenna hooked up to it. Or not the antenna, but the RF. And we got nothing, less than before. Less than with the other transistor. So my voltages on the transistor all look good, and um, there's just nothing getting through it. So the only thing I can think of, or I can assume, is that there's some other problem with this tuner that was probably not the transistors, and someone, whoever worked on this before me, changed the transistors, and they could not get the tuner to work and um, so the TV was broken didn't work they started changing transistors they changed the uh, IF IC and it still wouldn't work so I don't know how that Darlington ended up in there maybe maybe that's what it calls for maybe that's what was in there originally I can't see that low of a frequency transistor being in an RF amp but the transistor I put in there is an RF amp. I mean, I could try and change it again with another transistor, but you know, I know that these high frequency RF transistors are very picky. But the voltages look good, so it's not wired wrong or anything like that. Um, about to give up on this one. It's a neat TV, but. I'm not the first one in here and I can't get any service data on it which is you know if I had a schematic and I don't have a scope that goes up this fast my uh, my scope might but it's 100 megahertz scope on channel 3 it's gonna be close so these are Motorola technical specifications and I actually have a lot of the Motorola service data, but I don't appear to have it on this TV. But I was looking at this, and um, for the black and white TVs, they all, all of them pretty much, except the 9-inch, all of them pretty much seem, seem to use this OPTT408 tuner. OPTT408 uh, OPTT408 so I'm wondering if I pull in the SAMs if I pull one of these other model numbers if it might if I might get lucky and it might display the contents of that tuner guess I could do that and this is a a little bit different. This is a CMTT 460. And if this is the case, 2SC606, 2SC605, if this is the case, I might have connected the collector and emitter reversed. Um, I don't know. Because on this one, the base is the input. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe I try reversing the collector and base on that transistor. Correction, the emitter and base.
All right, I reversed base and emitter and now the transistor is really not conducting or turning on at all. So I don't think that's the case. This is a tough one. This is a real tough one. So this repair project has several unfavorable things going for it. Number one, someone else worked on it before me, so I'm not playing with uh, a virgin fault situation where I can, you know, look at the parts. The parts have all been changed. I don't know what the originals are. Uh, and that couples into number two, which is I can't find any service data on this. this. I cannot find any service data on this tuner in both the SAMS library or the Quasar Motorola library and I spent a good portion of the day uh, looking you know I've spent probably four hours digging through paperwork and I cannot find uh, documentation specific to this tuner I don't know if that's because it was sourced from a vendor that didn't supply it I don't know uh, the third thing is is it's a hot chassis set so it makes very difficult things like feeding into the IF or feeding into the video and audio because you can get a ground loop and with a hot chassis you'll end up with smoke and flames and possibly someone being shocked. So those three things make this um, pretty much a total loss as far as repair which is unfortunate because this TV is probably very rare and maybe this is the reason why this TV is very rare. I did pull the transistor out and I just bypassed it. Um, you know, bypassed from the emitter to collector. And I would think that with the power level that comes out of the blonder tongue modulator uh, that driving that signal that hot of a signal directly into this I should get enough with the RF amp bypassed for it to have a picture now it might be a crappy weak picture but I would think I would have a picture and I can't get a picture all I get is some sound oh yeah got some Britney Spears You know, and the, the the picture is, it's weird that when I put my hand there, it kind of comes in a little bit more. But the picture is obviously there. Uh, it's just far below what the set, the IF strip wants to see. But the sensitivity of the IF strip is very robust. So, obviously the mixer oscillator is working but maybe it's the wrong transistors and it's not working right or maybe there was something else wrong with the tuner that has not been fixed that was the source of the problem originally maybe one of these tuning uh, wafer things is screwed up the switches and somebody before me was chasing it trying to replace transistors and the transistors weren't the fault. So now we still got the original fault in place, plus we have all of these botched, cheesy, generic aftermarket transistors that are not going to perform right in a sensitive RF circuit. Uh, you know, these NTE parts, they just, yeah, they'll work fine for a generic audio amp or whatever, but when it gets to, when you you get into stuff that's inside shielded cans you really need the right transistors with the right capacitance and then probably you still need to realign the thing so we have another issue here besides this RF amp transistor so yeah, I must confess you're killing me. That's right, TV. So, I think I'm going to have to walk away from this one. Alright, so just to 
put it to rest because someone will say you're an idiot you only tried one transistor here's another transistor same thing absolutely dead I pulled the AGC line off a little bit's getting through now but nah it's still I'll, I'll, I'll do this. I'll keep looking for service data on it, and if I find something relevant, uh, maybe we'll come back to this, but at least we know what the deal is, so for now I'm going to put it back together and shelve it. soft rock portion of the show all right continuing on with this thing I, sometimes I just can't let these damn things get the best of me anyway I was digging through my stuff and I found the actual factory training manual on this thing and I came across something kind of interesting no schematic on the tuner but this shows the tuner and it says AGC approximately 2 volts no signal well, I got 9 volts there, and that would explain what's biasing that transistor on so hard. And if you look at the schematic the, right here, to tuner RFAGC, 3.2 with a signal, 1.8 without a signal. Well, I got 9 volts there right now. Alright, this keeps getting more interesting. Um, so this is 20 volts right here. 20 volts. We have 20 volts here on this side of this 2.2. We have 0 volts here. And this should be 6 volts. And right here we have 10 volts coming out. 9 to 10 volts. But why is this not... Why is this not... Uh, 6 volts? Either one of two things. This capacitor shorted or this resistor's open. I got zero volts there. So that, both that resistor, that resistor's cooking. That right there is the resistor. Okay, so that, that's the resistor right there and it's cooking hot. So I'm gonna say that capacitor's shorted. Wouldn't it be something if this whole damn thing was due to a shorted capacitor? By the way, I can take this 1.5 volt battery and apply that to the AGC and I get more gain. So that would suggest that that bias voltage on the AGC is, is important. All right, I cut that capacitor out I just cut it out and our our AGC voltage dropped to 2.6. Now when I connect the AGC we get sort of a picture. That's with it disconnected. The other thing is the fine tuning doesn't seem to work on this it's it's adjusting the core but it's not actually adjusting the picture so you're looking at the fine tuning gear and I swear it looks like whoever changed that transistor melted the living crap out of that gear with the soldering iron anyway this is having no effect and you can see it's moving the fine tuning but it's having no effect on the picture and you know without a schematic I just can't tell if they've used the right transistors or put the thing together right I mean what a mess man what a mess look at that gear it's just chewed up well, look at that alright I'm taking the tuner out and this is all starting to make sense to me now. The reason why this the UHF is loose is because the RCAs are soldered. 
and they couldn't unsolder them so they just took the this tuner out and with this one with it I'm do I might just cut that uh, never gonna use a UHF now that I got the tuner out I um, started looking at the schematic and I found that the what this configuration inside here is very close to this color the color one we looked at earlier which is an SE5020 and I look up SE5020 in the uh, manual and it comes up to an NTE161 which is uh, you know the right thing 800 megahertz day number two I've decided I'm not going to give up on this quite yet so this gets into the boring tedious kind of research part of the show which uh, yeah in the beginning I said we don't do research and development over here but uh, this is a little bit of research and repair so maybe instead of shop or lab we could call this the schlab uh, I have so we ran into a bad capacitor that was causing um, the wrong bias to the RF amp in this and I might suspect that somebody illegitimately repaired the tuner based on the bad capacitor in the past but now that the capacitor is out of the way now we got to try and straighten out the damage they did to the tuner that's all an assumption there's none of that is hard fact so here's the route I'm going since there's no schematic available anywhere documented that I can find on this specific tuner something close I found is this color set right here this Magnavox color set from 1975 so what I did is I they have two variants two tuners available in this set so what I've done is I photocopied both of them so that we can draw on them now looking at this out in decent lighting I suddenly see where the old RF amp transistor was and it was inside that little thing right there so we can see the shape of the package so they were definitely using a TO92 or that plastic case transistor. So in these two schematics, they show different transistors. And this one uses the round metal style packages. And this one uses the plastic style packages. Now, here's what I'm interested in so the first thing I'm going to do is in the NTE catalog I'm going to look up these three numbers A6E A2H and A2G usually the NTE book covers the numbers that are on the SAMS schematic A6E is an NTE 108 A2H is an NTE-108. A2G is an NTE-108. All right, so they all come up to NTE-108s, and you would say, oh, well, that makes sense. That, that transistor specs out right, and that's what I was saying about NTE is a very generic replacement that... Um, covers a wide range of stuff and you would automatically think well why didn't the manufacturer just spec out the same transistor for each one of those well they're not the same and here's proof of that so here you can see base emitter collector emitter base collector so obviously these were different so if you just go and you install NTE 108s because that's what the book calls for in these positions and you don't realize that the pinout was different on the original 
because they were not all the same part, then you're going to get something connected wrong. That's the problem with NTE. So NTE 108. So 108 NPN silicon, RF IF amp oscillator, that's probably okay. And so 800 megahertz, uh, 20 minimum is the gain. So yeah, you know, this, this would probably work. This is probably a logical choice for that replacement. Oh, okay, TO92, which the designation is 9A. Let's look at that. So here's 9A, emitter base collector. So let's come over here and look at this. Ah, see it doesn't match the top one. So, assuming that, assuming, again, and here we go with the guessing, assuming that this was the same package style, you know, did they put this in right? Because this is an NTE 108. I think the next step here is to take a few minutes and try and draw as much of this out as I can. Uh, I got some good magnifying glasses here. Oh, I should mention that obviously here's a transistor right here. Here, here. Right, there's another one right there that doesn't look like it's been touched. It'd be neat to get the number off of that, but I don't see that happening without destroying that transistor. These things are really not made to be worked on. You know, once these are put together and aligned, because they align these by bending these coils open and closed, and you come in here and you change any little thing, uh, any move any little wire around, you change the alignment of this thing. I mean, we don't really care about that because they're, you know, it's all channel three and four now, but still working on this without the proper equipment is not the right way to do it. And I don't have the proper equipment. I don't think there's anyone in business anymore that has the proper equipment. There used to be companies that all they did was rebuild and repair tuners. Yeah, that was back when. All right, so looking at this, uh, and drawing this schematic out, the uh, RF amp is very close to this right here. Uh, the resistor values are almost exactly the same. So, yeah, I think NTE 108 is going to work. Now I'm stuck. There's a couple things I'm looking at here. C. See these two coils right here? That one and that one. This is where the RF comes from. So this is like the antenna. And this is the oscillator mixer stage. So there's literally, the RF is coupled between these two coils. This is like an air core transformer. And that is shown right here. And I wonder if somebody bent this back for some reason, either cleaning it or something. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe it was supposed to be, they're supposed to be right next to each other or touching. I don't know. I'm going to leave it for now. This botch job here, I'm having trouble making sense of this. It does, it, this is the oscillator transistor, and it looks like collector and base might be reversed but I don't know. Anyway, I think an NTE 108 it, or whatever this is right here, I think an NTE 108 should work here or possibly that one I pulled out of that other television should work here. Um, but this, I'd like more information with this because I can't make sense out of this circuit at all when it comes to these, except these do have automatic fine tuning. But the transistors look like the NTE 108 will work. 
So it really seems to me that the base and the collector are reversed on this transistor based on what I'm looking at on these schematics and what I'm looking at in the back here. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, I don't know, this, every single tuner schematic that I've looked at shows one of these two points on the oscillator coils going to ground and that's not the way this is hooked up. Now I don't know if this is hooked up how it was originally so you know that's all I can do is assume that it is. But if the oscillator was running very weak you know if it was running at the right frequency but it was running very weak that could explain the lack of sensitivity. Um, but again I, I just if I had a schematic and I wasn't guessing, I'd be a lot better off. You know, so here's a, a bit of a thought and a question. Since the fine-tuning doesn't do anything, what would happen if the oscillator was just not running in this at all? Would it still tune in channels because the mixer and the front end kind of working... Um, would it act kind of just, would it tune stuff in? Because the modulator, the BT modulator, is forcing such a high signal into this. If the oscillator was not running, would we get what we've got here? We're just, it's just kind of acting, I guess, a little bit like a TRF set, where it's just brute force tuning in some stuff based on the the mixer tuning and the front end tuning. I don't know, that's, yeah, that's a good question. Maybe the oscillator is just not running. You know, maybe that's why there's no sensitivity. It's just, uh, we're not injecting anything in, into this. And I, I guess, I think what we could do is we could use a signal generator and we could inject, uh, you know, an oscillator function into this. I don't know, let's let's uh, put the tuner back in and play with that. That's an interesting thought. What if the oscillator is just not running? I assumed it was because it was tuning in stations, but that's with such a high signal level. I don't know, let's try it. <laughs> Last season, Five Moms to be literally mommed up. The hardest time I've ever went through. All right, so we're back to uh, the hip hop show in the morning. You can tell because we have the cash settlement, cash loan, Nissan Altima vehicle commercials rolling out. Anyway, uh, I've pretty much confirmed that oscillator is not running. None of the voltages look right on it, and I took and shorted the collector to ground with a screwdriver and nothing changed so what I'm gonna do is I've got the lower signal generator down here um, injected into this thing and now I gotta be honest I don't know if the channel if channel 4 is about 50 something megahertz so or do we in, we would have to inject above that? Here here comes my weak point coming through. So would we inject above it? Would we inject 45 megahertz above it? So like a hundred and something? I don't know. Let's just try it. Um, here we go. I gotta get off the commercial. I swear.
Swiffer wet jet. There's no heavy bucket or mop to wring out because the absorbent lock technology traps dirt and liquid inside. So let's go up to on all finished surfaces, tile, laminate, and hardwood, and it prevents streaks and hazing better than. I guess I could turn the modulation off, huh? First time for a convenient clean. Try Swiffer wet jet with a money back guarantee. Brand power helping you buy better. At Chipotle, our guac is always hand mashed. All right, stand by. Come to that side of the court. There we go. Because if y'all want the court, you'll play us for the court like real men. So y'all want to play for it? You heard what I said? <laughs> Am I stuttering? Huh? Suckers. So, people come in here and they think you got us. You are not serious. Adjusting the frequency. Look at how I can crystallize it. Look at that. Look at how I can crystallize it just like the fine tuning. The game is what you want. The game is what you're going to So crystallized is about 109 megahertz. So whatever channel four is plus 109. So let's check the sensitivity. I'm directly into the direct TV box, so I'm running a uh, I'm running a uh, a good signal. A, a, a normal a normal level signal. So confirmation what's wrong with this TV is the oscillator is not running and I'm really surprised that it would have the static that it did with the oscillator not running I would think it would be totally dead So the oscillator isn't running, but the the key is the question here is is that's if I turn the power level. Turn it. You know, the stronger the oscillator, the stronger I. The stronger I feed my signal generator into it, the better the picture is. That's a really good picture right there. So. Really good picture. I know I got a bright light in here, so it's screwing with it, but. Cigarette butts. Next paper. Mental. Working good. Oscillator's not running. And is it because they botched it, or is it because the transistor's in wrong? Uh, good question. Looks to me like the transistor's in wrong. But it is the problem is not the RF amp. The problem is the oscillator. So check this out. I'm I'm in the FM broadcast band now.
emotional landscape of Mahler's as many miles as they want. No limit. And check it out. Claremont Hyundai also specializes in that rough credit. So don't let bad credit stop you. From oh, yeah. Check out Claremont Hyundai. Hyundai. Forget and Nissan. And it's Hyundai. For a quick approval from your mobile phone at Star Star Car. That's Claremont Hyundai. Oh, yeah. Here's Ryan's favorite song. Alright, this is an NTE 108 that was in the oscillator section. Shows it's good. Um, what I've done is I just tacked on three wires there so I can kind of hook it, hook it up and flip it around. And also this gold piece of wire here. I'm thinking this gold piece of wire was a coil that got straightened out. So seeing it work with the uh, signal generator I'm, I'm gonna assume that this air coil is okay just leave that alone all right uh, it's I believe the oscillator is running but it's way off frequency because I adjust the fine-tuning and it changes now Also, if I just move my hand near the transistor, so it's either way too slow or way too fast, and I can't tell. I just hate to tear the tuner apart and install it, and that not be. I still not have it hooked up right, but it's working different than it's ever worked before. Alright, I think this is what this is supposed to look like. I'm not sure though. I'm not sure. I don't know if I got the transistor in right. I don't know if that yellow wire is supposed to be coiled like that. I don't know how many turns. I don't know how much was broken off. I just don't know. It's all a guessing game. Same thing, it's not, not doing anything now. It's like it's not running again, so I don't know. Starting to get uh, really burned out. I mean, I know what's wrong, I just don't know how it's supposed to be wired. Holy, I got it working. What I did was I moved the base to a different pin let's see I moved the base I moved the base of the transistor from that pin up there the pin on the top left to the pin on the top bottom. I looked at the, I just sat, sat in a chair and stared at the layout and I finally connected it to what I thought would work. And sure enough, the oscillator is running. Now it's not 100% right because it doesn't work with the DirecTV box direct the sensitivity is still a little lacking so something is still wrong but it's working good and it has a good picture with uh, with the BT modulator which is far better than anything yet Nickelback, Nickelback, oh yeah. Guess the TV likes Nickelback.
You know, it seems pretty sensitive. I don't understand why it won't work off the DirecTV box. Um, I put that RF amp, I put that transistor back in that we got out of the... Uh, come on, focus. That one, that little metal one, I put that one back in because I, I thought that might be more appropriate. It didn't seem to change anything from the plastic one. It's working very good. It's just not quite right. Do I turn the mixer plate coil? Do I assume maybe someone twisted that? It's working. It's working. It's freaking working. Can you believe it? So the BT modulator has a power level here. That's the power level all the way down. That's all the way up. All the way down. All the way up. Also keep in mind that this capacitor over here is still cut out of the circuit. And this is not ideal at all what's going on here. All these wires and RF stuff and shields missing and the fronts missing off the tuner. Uh, it's incredible it's working at all. Santa Ana wind pattern will continue as we head into Tuesday and then we're dealing with very strong northeast and... All right. So this video is not nearly over yet. If I disconnect the AGC, it makes little to no difference now. I can do that. That's the AGC disconnected. And without the oscillator running, of course, that made a huge difference. And also, if I connect that shorted capacitor, it makes the same difference that you see there. So, we're working our way back through the problem that initially triggered these malicious repairs that trashed the set. So, we have a lack of sensitivity now, and I, I don't know what's causing that. It could be not having the right oscillator transistor, uh, it could be not having the right RF amp, it could be that the coils aren't right. I'm pretty sure I got everything connected right, but um, the fact that it will not work on the DirecTV box because the DirecTV box output is too weak tells me that there's a gross lack of sensitivity here. Um, you know, you shouldn't need to use a BT modulator, a professional rack mount modulator, to get this to work. So, there's still a problem. But I think before I address the sensitivity, I need to change the capacitor and, you know, tidy up the mess a little bit. Because I'm not really sure if something that I'm doing with all the sloppy wires and that's causing it. So... This video is not nearly over yet. Um, we gotta get to the bottom of it now. At this point, this, we've already gone past the point of no return with this thing. Do you really think I'd call Russia to help me with an election? Give me a break. I always used to say the toughest people are Manhattan real estate guys and blah, blah. Now I say they're babies. Who's the best? Best. The political people. This is the most deceptive, vicious world. It is vicious. It's full of lies, deceit, and deception. There we go. That's how much NTE there is. Uh, let's see. I wanted to get 108, 161, and 107. 107. So 107, try one of these. I can't even read the prices on these anymore. 108, what is
I'll tell you what, I'll come over and get it someday. Oh, you do that? Oh, yeah. No, I come get it. I'm working on it. Yeah, running the monitors, running the drive cycle. It had a bad uh, variable valve timing solenoid, so I changed it. And I'm running the readiness monitors on it. Yeah, I repair it. Set set the monitors. Yeah, I'm impressed with the NTE collection. I went to my local guy and picked up some transistors and as you might have seen in the video instead of NTE 109 they had a bag of these which are PN5179 now here's a little bit of educational crap that I don't know if I got this through earlier in the video you can't use the NTE catalog to identify a transistor as that part because the NTE part might cover 500 transistors below it. As an example you might have a 500 megahertz transistor and the NTE part is a 900 megahertz transistor so the 900 megahertz NTE will replace the 500 megahertz original but you can't take that 500 megahertz original and use it where a 900 megahertz transistor is required so you can never use the NTE catalog to correctly identify a transistor you can get close but the NTE part will supersede so many parts below it so let's look this PN5179 up in my actual transistor manual which is this phone book here and see this mainly only covers Japanese and generic stuff like 2N, 2SC, 2SD but let's see if this PN is in here so RF low power silicon so here it is PN5179 it is a it's actually a 900 megahertz transistor but it's only 12 volts where the NTE was 25 volts now I think 12 volts will be okay here but that's just an example of and let's see is this the gain wow the gain on this thing is uh, 250 so what we're gonna do I got this IC socket. What I'm going to do is I am going to cut those socket pins out of it. And I'm going to solder them. I'm going to pull our oscillator transistor back out and I'm going to solder those pins in there as short as I can. That way I can um, plug in some different transistors. I'm also going to check all the carbon resistors while I have the transistor out. I really believe the problem with this is the lack of sensitivity is due to the oscillator transistor because as we saw with the signal generator, the tuner worked well with the direct TV box as it should. So let me get started on this. I'm going to get the transistor out, put the socket pins in, and check all our carbon resistors. All right. There are three socket pins installed. Um, now I can switch transistors. I did check all of the resistors. They're all decent. I wouldn't say they're great, but they're decent. And again, I really feel like it's something with the, this oscillator section because if I feed the oscillator in with the signal generator, it works fine. 
I'm going to start with the PN transistor. Um, you know, I wish, I really wish I had a schematic of this thing. I, I still, I'm not 100% sure I'm installing the transistor right. It's very possible I'm not. But all I can do is guess and make educated guesses by looking at the circuit. Well, this is bizarre, and here's something I can't explain. So the signal generator's turned off. If I just take the ground lead from the signal generator, because the transistors are working the same, I tried the PN, and now I'm on the NTE 107, and it's the same on the Direct TV box. But if I just take the ground wire from the signal generator and touch it anywhere on the chassis, saying he's going to keep fighting. Brendan's team has actually just taken his case into the federal court system. Um, and then soon after... I don't get this. One, and that's on the Direct TV box. Episodes of Making a Murderer Part 2 on Netflix starting tomorrow. Okay, yeah, well, there it is. And you know what? All I did was take it out of the isolation transformer. Explain that. There's nothing wrong with the tuner. It's some weird RF thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know. Weird RF stuff. So I've been chasing this problem that was simply the R having it connected through the isolation transformer. Some weird RF thing. And that, it, it shouldn't do that, but who knows. We're not backing down. I'll do whatever it takes to protect health care as a human right, to defend our coast and public lands against drugs, and stop the attacks on public schools, and protect the California dream for all, regardless of race, gender, sexual orientation, or mm. immigration status. Gavin Newsom for governor. Courage for a change. Mm. Steve Knight, cut middle class taxes. Courage for more taxes. Working great with the direct TV box now. I'm gonna pull the tuner out and put it back together. I'll show you what I did Okay, here's a look. This is probably for the second or third time. I got rid of that coil uh, That coil was slowing the oscillator down. So now you can see I got the tuning slug there in about the middle of its range so I don't think this thing had a coil there uh, I went with the NTE 107 because it worked the best. So let me let me try and put the front of this thing back on and deal with all this spring-loaded puzzle. Looks like I got it back together. I got the side put back on it. I'm gonna put it back in see if it works. If it works, I'm gonna uh, put put this cover back on it and we'll solder it all back in. This is one tormented, tortured, botched, burnt, melted tuner. So, if it works, I'm happy. The tuner's back in and it's working. I am going to take the whole TV outside and solder all these wires back on and hopefully I can find the shield that goes on the outside. And um, yeah, it's working pretty good. All right, this is our basic oscillator schematic here. So we have 20 volts, comes through a resistor to the collector. Now originally when I first started they had the base and the collector reversed. Alright, and, and, and these represent the four tabs on that little circuit board. This right here is the switching coil when you rotate the tuner, the different oscillator coils. And these things represent the uh, points. So, the emitter goes straight to ground through a resistor, nothing else tied to it. 
the problem I had why the oscillator was not running when I got the base and the collector hooked up right was they had it hooked originally they had it hooked to this point right here okay and that didn't make sense to me because th this resistor and this resistor create the bias network for the uh, car alarm that just went off and what didn't make sense to me was looking at this when you were to switch this from one channel to another basically what would happen is this disconnects for a second right well what's going to happen is you're going to take this resistor out of circuit when this you're changing channel and you're going to force the bias wide open on this so what i did is looking at that i said no this here has got to connect to this point right here and that's what fixed it that's what ultimately got it running now the deal with the uh, MP transistor that was in the box in substitution of the NTE it was a 12 volt transistor uh, and we have a 20 volt B plus here now when this is running this is only sitting at about 13 volts but still that's why you can't use the NTE book to identify correctly transistors because I could have put that MP in here which would have lasted you know but it could have blown up because it's only a 12 volt transistor where the NTE is a 30 volt transistor so anyway that's that's what was wrong they had the base was connected up here instead of down to this resistor so when you switch channels you're just taking this out of the circuit I got this back all soldered together and cleaned up got the IF hooked up now I'm changing this capacitor here which was that one right there which was the one that was shorted even though once I got the oscillator running inside the tuner it really didn't make a difference all this capacitor is for is AGC delay which AGC delay makes absolutely no difference in uh, when you're not using a, a ratchet tuner flipping between different strength channels so I'm mainly just changing the capacitor to make the internet happy because the internet loves changing capacitors and this is an electrolytic capacitor so that doubles the internet score value of changing here it is at a full zero ohms um, also I replaced the fuse I just tacked another two amp slow blow across the one that was there I'm not gonna keep going deeper and deeper into this thing it probably technically should have all these capacitors replaced because if one's gonna short that there's probably all of them are gonna start shorting but anyway I think I think it's all buttoned back up let's do a quick summary on this it's been such a long video that hell I pretty much forgot what what all's gone down was started out the tuner was not working got into the tuner two transistors had been changed in the tuner the RF amp which was the one there you can actually see my replacement was a low frequency Darlington uh, the wrong part of course that would not work as an RF amp the one that I ended up leaving in there was out of an out of a newer TV tuner RF amp the main reason it wasn't working is the oscillator transistor was not connected right it had been replaced with an NTE 109 which was an okay replacement I ended up going with an NTE 107 uh, which seemed to work better when testing different transistors and we had a shorted capacitor over here which has now been replaced which was part of the AGC delay like I say that that actually doesn't matter anymore 
because AGC delay is is basically keeps the gain from rapidly jumping when you're changing channels. So yeah, that's that's just a little creature comfort function anyway. You don't really need that. And along the along the uh, path of this, I blew the line fuse somehow. It's a hot chassis set, but we had no no ch no real choice but to fix the tuner because putting other inputs, feeding other inputs into a hot chassis set is just too dangerous. So anyway, it's fixed. Girl, and we're gonna put some beautifully oh. chopped peppers. Isn't that fun? They're gorgeous. It's like yeah. confetti. <laughs> and then we're just gonna put down some. I'm using a little uh, chorizo. Mm -hmm. Whatever. All right, now I need the lid. Love that you can see all the pretty ingredients right through the lid. We're just gonna let it melt because I don't want to burn my pizza. I just oh, want to melt yeah. that cheese, right. get all those flavors to play Ooh, together. Look at how quickly that's happening. Yeah. I need to glue this back onto the knob here, so maybe I'll do that while I let this thing reboot. At least I think this was on. Oh yeah, there we go. Tanks. Introducing the Power Smokeless Grill. The only indoor grill with smoke extracting technology. Watch again as it sucks up that smoke and odor like a vacuum. The five star reviews say it all. People love the Power Smokeless Grill. I've never used an indoor grill that gave you outdoor charcoal results, ever. I get the outdoor feeling, taste, and look of the food that I miss from our outdoor grill. It heats up almost immediately. It gives you that char that you're looking for, and I was just shocked. Nothing. There's no smoke in the apartment. We didn't have to open the doors. The Power Smokeless Grill really is smokeless. I even asked Cheryl, where's the smoke? <laughs> you can grill juicy porterhouse, surf and turf, tender cowboy, and succulent jumbo shrimp, barbecue back ribs. Look at the char grill results. You'd never know it wasn't cooked on an outdoor grill. What's the secret? The heat source reaching 450 degrees Fahrenheit connects to the grill plate so all that fat can drip through the grates into the drip tray below. This is the healthy way to cook and that fat drains away through the open grill just like an outdoor barbecue. The turbo speed smoke extractor technology captures and extracts virtually all the smoke. This means now you can have an open grill right in your kitchen. One press and it instantly starts heating. It's small enough for an apartment but big enough to feed a hungry family. That's because the entire food Footprint is edge-to-edge -edge grilling surface. Grill I love my turbo smoke extractor.